Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome back to I Care For Your Brain with Dr. Sullivan. That is me, board certified neuropsychologist. We are back tonight with another free brain health lecture to talk about my new favorite topic. This is the gut brain axis. I have been focused on this topic for a few weeks now and have been learning so many new amazing things that have been helping my patients. Big part of what a neuropsychologist does is a very detailed assessment, including interviews with you and your loved ones and paper and pencil test to determine the most appropriate cognitive and behavioral diagnosis for you. The purpose of doing all that is to come up with a set of recommendations that will specifically help you. Some of what we do on this channel is reach out to folks who have very specific diagnoses within the brain health community, and other things I do are meant to help everyone with a brain. What we're gonna talk about tonight is something that will help everyone who cares about the health of their brain, but will also reach out to those of you who are living with very specific brain health challenges. The gut-brain axis is fascinating. It represents a bi-directional communication system from the gastrointestinal tract, which starts all the way up here in the mouth and goes all the way to where we get rid of the food, uh, and the central nervous system. So we have afferent connections, which go from the gut up to the brain, and then we have efferent connections that go down from the brain to the gut. So this is a signaling system where each of these two systems are communicating and modulating each other's behavior, which is really, really fascinating and tells us that there is influence coming from both sections. Why this is so meaningful to us is because it represents an area of intervention. And why I stayed out of this conversation for a while was because there's a lot of supplements. We often hear about prebiotics, postbiotics, and I wanted to make sure I really understood the science of it before I brought it to you all in this community. So in May, May 19th to be exact, a Thursday, we're gonna be having a Zoom-based webinar. First, I thought it would be about 90 minutes, but it's already sure to be about two hours at least with all the information that I'm gathering. Um, it's really about a five-year history in science, in neuroscience related to the gut-brain axis that I am whittling down to my presentation. I want you to understand the communication system, what's at stake, how can we influence the gut-brain axis, and how is it that we can really use this information to our advantage. So we're gonna focus all on the vagus nerve, which is a large cranial nerve that does a lot of the physical connections between the two systems. But we also have to talk about other types of signaling, specifically something called the microbiota. You will know exactly what that is uh, after you attend the webinar. So this is the millions and millions of both good and bad bacteria Bacteria, about a thousand species at least that live in our gut and directly and indirectly communicate with the brain and determine things like our mood, our immune system, our response to stress, our tendency to get overwhelmed, and even the beginning, the, the early stages, the cause of some neurological conditions and the exacerbation of many, many conditions. So this is not just a coexisting relationship. This is a very mutually beneficial or mutually negative relationship. And so the information I'm gonna share with you in the webinar is really to help you make decisions that guide us over into having healthier bacteria, um, better communication, and we're gonna go into that a little bit even tonight. So this microbiota that lives in the gut, um, this really determines so much of our health. So like I said, not just the development, there is literature related to some movement disorders um, where we talk about things actually starting in the gut. Parkinson's has the most research, um, but when we get over into consequences and worsening and exacerbation, we are seeing information about post-stroke syndromes. And then when we start to talk about treatments that are actually looking at replacing the microbiota, we get into things like essential tremor. So this is related to a lot of you out there, a lot of our communities. 
I thought I knew about healthy food choices before I started to study this gut-brain axis, and I really did not know much. I know a lot about brain-healthy foods, I know a lot about heart-healthy foods, but I really did not know a lot about gut-healthy foods. And now that I have educated myself, I really wanna pass that along to you. So I now eat things that if you were to have told me a year ago would completely shock me. Um, it really does appeal to me because it is an area of control that my patients can take and all of you out there who are going to understand this information. So how do we acquire this microbiota? Well, this is from our genes and our environment. And our environment mostly is what we choose to put into our mouths. The baby's microbiota develops the moment it comes into the world. Now it develops differently, whether the mode of birth that you have, but within two to three years, this microbiota is established. This is about the same window of time that is most um, uh, intensely developmental for the brain. And those two things are not coincidence. And so understanding that is actually really interesting. We know that when the gut microbiome is off, it sets off a chain reaction throughout the body, really via the immune system that can have very negative effects for our mood, our cognition, and specifically our inflammation, which is such a critical part of our overall health, especially our brain health. So tonight I wanna to entice you with five fascinating uh, facts that I have been learning about the gut-brain axis to try to uh, convince you that this is something that is worthy of your time and attention. So the very first thing is that what we know about the gut-brain axis is that it is a wonderful, if not the most powerful way to affect whole body and brain inflammation. Now inflammation, as we know, is the core of many negative disease processes that happen in the brain. And we know that when there's inflammation in the gut via the diet, that this gets communicated to the brain. And then we also see inflammation at the brain level. So this is directly related to our stress system, something called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. That's a mouthful. And this is really the part of our brain that fine tunes us to how we react to stress. So if you're someone who's overwhelmed easy, if you're a very sensitive person, this is information you really need to know to be able to control that to a greater degree. Many people who have brain health challenges also have GI issues. And I used to think that they were two separate processes, but now what I understand is that for most people, they are one in the same. And because the brain is so hard to treat in a vacuum, right? You have learned about the blood-brain barrier with me and how it is hard for bigger size molecules to get into the brain. And that's usually a good thing because we're trying to keep out toxins and poisons. But that also means that sometimes the medicines that we take to affect brain health aren't even actually getting into the brain. So with this direct connection between the gut and the brain in the uh, in the, the vagus nerve, we have an opportunity to intervene at the level of the brain because it's bypassing the blood-brain barrier all on its own. So issues in the gut almost always means issues in the brain and vice versa. So I was just creeping the other day on a Facebook page for folks. There were posts in there about gluten intolerance, celiac disease, and folks saying, when I stay away from wheat, for example, I actually feel better. I feel like my tremors are better. And that does not surprise me now. I really feel like I have an understanding of that. So that's number one. We have an opportunity to impact inflammation when we know about gut health. Number two is it's all about a balance. It's a ratio. The idea is not to get rid of all bacteria. This microbiota is many, many, many hundreds of good bacteria bacteria, healthy bacteria, things that help us, support us, and many hundreds and thousands of bad bacteria. And it's constantly fluctuating depending on what we eat, right? And so if we just knew how to do better, which is really kind of my whole philosophy in being with you here with I Care for the Brain is once you know better, you do better, but who's telling you? We need a, a trustworthy source to get this scientific information. So when there's an imbalance, this is where we have inflammation, this is where a lot of autoimmune diseases can come from, and we know that there's something in the gut that is very 
uh, emotionally based, right? And last time I told you that 95% of the serotonin in our whole body resides in the gut. You know, we know all about butterflies in the stomach and when we feel a sense of trauma and stress, we know we feel it in the gut. So finally science has caught up and we now have a really good solid understanding of why this is and how it relates to mental health. Number three is that this stuff really matters in the world of brain health that we both care about so much. We now understand um, how dramatically influential the gut is on brain health. Um, specifically in the webinar, we're gonna go through Parkinson's disease, we're gonna go through the impact post-stroke, and I'm actually gonna show you a video of a woman with essential tremor who underwent a fecal transplant to put healthy bacteria into her lower GI system and the dramatic impact it had on her essential tremor. It's really, really compelling when you see it. So this is a very hot topic in neuroscience and I, I would believe in you know, three to five years when you go to your neurologist, your neuropsychologist, this will be another brain health recommendation, just like exercise, just like, you know, good socialization and low stress, healthy GI uh, microbiota, it's gonna be right up there. So I am packaging this all together and we'll present it to you um, in that May 19th webinar. Number four, what we eat really matters. And honestly, I really used to think I had a healthy diet. I've been a vegetarian for very, very long time. Um, I generally eat a fair amount of vegetables um, and you know, try, don't think I did a great job before this, tried to stay away from processed foods and sugars, but oh my God, what I eat has dramatically changed and I do feel better. There's no doubt about it. So you're going to learn about some foods that may not appeal to you on, 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 the, on the straightaway, but you can either get an acquired taste for them or you can treat them like medicine, right? Don't we all want that natural solution? Small quantities for the betterment of your brain and your mental health. Health, I think are worth it. And number five is this is the new modifiable risk factor for brain health. So meaning we can do something about it, but we don't, it's not good enough to just have that knowledge and go out in the world and buy products without understanding the science. And so we're gonna talk about what is really going on with all these supplements that are supposed to help your brain health. I have definitely found areas of concern and one or two products have so far gotten my approval. I still have more research to do, but of course this will be included in the webinar. So this is May 19th. It's gonna start at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. But when you sign up for the webinar, which we'll have a little sign up uh, here in the comments, um, you get access to the Zoom invitation for that day, but you also are gonna get a replay of it that you will just click on and watch anytime, as many times as you want, and you will get a copy of my PowerPoint. What's different about what I do in webinars versus here is here it's just my big face and you're just listening to me. In a webinar, I've got my PowerPoint, which I love making PowerPoints. I've probably spent between research and making my PowerPoint, which today is about 80 slides, might be more by the time I'm done, uh, definitely at the 100 hour mark. It's something that I pour a lot of passion into and I feel a responsibility to do it to the very best of my ability. So I'm proud of it so far. Um, we have had a great response to our signups, but they are limited. And so if you're interested, I would recommend signing up today. So if you go to our website at ICFYB, this is icareforyourbrain.com backslash gut, G-U-T. You will see the sign up there. It is $27. Um, like I said, I think that um, when we do these webinars, we do charge a fee, which is different from here because there's a lot of costs that go along with it. We always make a really nice, generous donation to a, um, a place, a scientific group that is studying what we are uh, reporting. So we did it with essential tremor, with orthostatic tremor. This one is gonna go to the Stanford Medicine Center for Human Microbiome Studies. I have been most impressed with their systematic objective offerings in this aspect of science. And so you can feel good about that, that part of uh, the money that you spend on the webinar will go to furthering the science, which I, I guarantee you is going to be a part of future brain health. So I hope that you will consider joining us. I look forward to being with you very near in the future with 
multiple different brain health topics. Let me know what you want me to talk about. And I so appreciate you being here with me tonight. I hope you all take very good care until I see you next time. Bye-bye.